Welcome to GED Math and Dirt News. In these tutorials, I will show you how to solve many of the GED math problems using the TI-30XS scientific calculator. Welcome to GED Math in 30 Days. I'm your host. My name is Jeremy Tinsley, an adult educator for the last 20 years. Um, I've created my book. I created ebooks. So go to uh, passgedmath.com to buy the ebook for $19.99. It shows you how to uh, how, how to use the TI-30X calculator to pass your GED Math exam in 30 days. Okay, I'm glad you're here to join me. Uh, today, we'll be discussing how to use the Pythagorean theorem. I will show you how to solve this problem in less than a minute. Uh, first, you have to know some basics about what the Pythagorean theorem is. The Pythagorean theorem is a formula used to find the missing side of a right triangle. Okay, so a right triangle is just a, tri a triangle that has a 90 degree angle, or think of an L, it has a little square. That's the indicator that tells you a triangle is a 90 degree angle. So, first of all, I want to uh, look at a problem. Uh, this is from the GD study guide, available for free on GD.com. Um, let's read this question. It has the foundation of a building is in the shape of a rectangle with a length of 20 meters and a width of 18. Well, this doesn't look like a triangle. That's because you haven't read the question yet. To the nearest meter, what is the distance from the top left corner of the foundation to the bottom right corner of the foundation? So again, so they want to know the length from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. Okay, so this is called a diagonal. Okay, so you want to be careful. You want to be. You want to fully understand what the Pythagorean theorem is. We want to solve for the missing side. If you notice, because we have a rectangle, you should identify or should know that since this side is eighteen, this side is eighteen, and now we have our right triangle. This is what indicates the right angle. So this side is eighteen. This side is twenty. I'm gonna give you, show you a quick way to solve this problem in less than 30 seconds. So first of all, you have to understand, given a right triangle, you have two legs A and a leg B. Your leg C is a special leg called your hypotenuse. Okay, so in this, in this question, we do not know C. If you do not, if you do not know C, I'm going to give you a simple formula to use to figure out what C is. It'll take you less than five seconds. So we know A is 18. Oops, that's a terrible triangle. We know A is 18. We know 20. We do not know C. Okay, so let's open up our calculator and do this problem. Very easy problem. You won't believe it. Okay, you won't believe how easy this problem is. You're going to shake your head and say, I've been studying for weeks, and, and why couldn't I get this problem? Well, I'm about to show you in about 20 seconds. So I'm going to move this down here so we can see it clearly. I'm going to erase these other things from here, from the other. Okay. So we have our hypotenuse. We have to figure out our hypotenuse, right? So the original formula for the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's on your formula sheet, okay? What I'm about to show you is two simple formulas. If you wanna find the hypotenuse, if you, if you wanna know C, you're gonna do A squared plus B squared. If you have a missing leg and you know the hypotenuse, so if you wanna either know A or B, you're gonna do another simple formula, C squared, minus a or b squared. So say, for example, you wanted to know a, we would subtract b squared, okay? So let me just uh, make that a or b. I just put a just so we know. So you want to find a, c squared minus b squared. If you wanted to know b, square root of c squared minus a squared. And I'm about to show you how easy it is, okay? So I want to save this. I'm going to clear the screen first. I'm going to move these over, actually. So we move those out the way because this is very important. So we're gonna move this. First of all, we're gonna make them a little smaller and then we're gonna move them up here. Okay, and I accidentally took the, the uh, 
the S and the E from the hypotenuse, but I'll write those over fairly quickly. Well, watch how fast we can do this problem. Watch this. So since we want to know C, the formula is the square root of A squared plus B squared. So all we're going to do is go on our TI30X calculator. We're going to hit second. We're going to hit the X squared button to give us our square root. We know A squared was 18, so 18 squared plus 20 squared. That's simple. Hit your right arrow, hit enter. So our answer is 2 squared root of 81. To change to a decimal, we hit our double arrows right above enter, and we now have our answer as 26.907. So 26.907. That's simple. I'm going to move this down uh, so we can look at our answer. Okay, move this down. Um, and then I'm going to clear the screen. Okay, let's go back to our, um, our, our document and let's check our answers. And this is how easy this becomes. And we've got 26.907. So it says round us to the nearest meter quickly, 26.907. Said round out to the nearest whole number. That's the ones place. Five or above. So that's five or above. That becomes a seven. And our answer is 27. That simple. That simple. Now, what if I'm going to give you an example where we don't know, where we don't know the hypotenuse. Again, very simple. I'm just going to make a simple, simple problem fairly quickly. So we have our right triangle, and it's not drawn a scale, of course. Uh, let's say we know uh, this is uh, 26. And this is 10. OK, so if you recall, this is my side A. We don't know side B, but we know side C. Okay, so if you recall, uh, let's let's look back. Let me clear the screen. So we have a triangle with a missing side, or with a missing leg. We don't know. We we know one of the legs, which is ten, and we know the hypotenuse is twenty six. So let's open up the calculator and let's do this problem again. So let me clear the screen. Let me clear the key presses so you can go back. Let me move this down so we so we can see all the key presses here. Make it a little smaller. And we'll move that right here. Okay. So remember, recall that if you don't know one of the legs, you're going to subtract. So since we don't know B, we're going to use the formula B equal the square root of C squared minus A squared. Okay, watch how easy it is, watch this. So here we hit second, we hit the square root button, C squared is 26, I mean C is 26, so 26 squared minus side A is 10, so 10 squared, we get out of our square root, we're done. The missing leg is 24, <laughs> that easy. I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm laughing, but it's that simple. So that's all you got to remember. So to do the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the formula given to you on your formula sheet. But it's real simple. If you if you do not know the hypotenuse, if the uh, missing the missing side is the hypotenuse, you're just doing the square root of a squared plus b squared. You can use your calculator. You're done in five to ten seconds. If you know the hypotenuse and you know one of the legs, you're gonna do c squared minus whatever that other the, the leg that's uh, the leg that you know. So c squared minus a squared uh, will give you your b. So again, two simple formulas. If you don't know the hypotenuse, the square root of a squared plus b squared. Let me write that down one more time. So if you do not know the hypotenuse, the square root of a squared plus b squared. If you do not know one of the legs, is c squared minus b squared. And if you know, if you miss inside b or leg b, it's the square root of c squared minus a squared. Listen, all you have to know is if you're looking for the hypotenuse, you add them. 
<laughs> if you're missing, if you have the hypotenuse and you're missing one of the legs, you're subtracting from the hypotenuse. Very easy. Hope this helps you. Good luck on your GED math exam. Make sure you check out my website, uh, pastgedmath.com. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment so I know how you're doing in your exam. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day.